excellent. Now let's break down his slice backhand, which is, in my opinion, the greatest slice of all time. Now Federer's slice can produce 5,300 RPM on the ball. This is more than Nadal's forehand. So he's producing more spin on his slice backhand than Nadal's producing on his forehand ground stroke. Now Federer's technique is very simple, but it's very different to a lot of pros. Many pros will prepare in a very similar position, but then they'll hit the shot and extend out towards their target. So you'll see a lot of the pro players and club players as well, they'll prepare above that left shoulder and as they make contact, they'll go towards their target, almost guiding the ball. Now this works at some level, you can produce a good amount of power, a good amount of spin at the same time. But with Federer's slice, what he does slightly different is he tends to lift the, the rack ahead slightly higher than a lot of the pros. So instead of having his racket touching that left shoulder or right above the left shoulder, he creates a bit of space and you can see that sometimes his slice will start at head level and from this position he's able to now cut down the ball much more aggressively because of that higher preparation phase. So as soon as he sees the balls coming to the backhand, he's decided to hit that slice. He now turns the body, so he gets that unit turn once again, and he makes sure that the non-hitting hand is helping him prepare that rack ahead. So he's preparing with the left hand holding the throat of the racket like so. The racket is now above my left shoulder, but it isn't touching the left shoulder and I'm pulling the racket back now using that left hand. So my left hand is actually creating a little bit of tension in the racket head and in my hand by me pulling back. So I'm, instead of just being in this position, I'm now pulling the racket back, creating this tension effect, which will then be released during that contact point. Now what this does, if you imagine when you're going to flick somebody, if I flick somebody just using my middle finger, I'm not gonna have that much power. But because I'm using my thumb now, the middle finger is trying to go forward, but the thumb is holding it back. As soon as I release, I have a lot of power on that flick. That's the same principle that we can use on that backhand slice. We get into that position using the left hand. The right hand can almost want to pull down, but my left hand is forcing it to stay back. My elbow is bent. My right elbow is around a 90 degree angle in this position. And from here, instead of now making contact and going forward with the rack ahead, what Federer does is makes contact and cuts across the body. So his elbow is almost like a pendulum across the body, like so. Traditionally, the slice is this shape, Federer is, is this shape. Now, what this allows him to do is produce that massive underspin on the ball, produce side spin when he wants to. So if he's going down the line from the ad side, he can now produce that side spin, which will make the ball go away from the opponent. So he's able to hit the ball as hard as he wants. He's able to deal with pace without slowing down the racket. Once you start traveling towards that target, it becomes more of a guide, more of a push, which once again, it can work. But when we compare Federer's slice to most players, Federer's is miles ahead. It's because of the way he swings the racket. He's using that pendulum effect. He's creating that power, that energy in the racket with the preparation, and then he releases it across the body and he can really accelerate through the point of contact without having to now guide that ball. He can really rip the ball, produce that underspin, produce that side spin because of the way he hits that shot. So we can all copy the starting base of the Federer slice. Get the left hand to help you, make sure that you get the racket above your non-hitting uh, shoulder, so your left shoulder for the right handers out there. The racket is above the left shoulder and the higher the ball bounces, so the higher your contact point will be, the higher you prepare, which will allow you to cut down the back of the ball. You can also work on that finish. Instead of finishing all your slices 
pushing outwards, you can start to work hitting across the body. So have this right arm create that pendulum effect this way as you make contact.